so we start with the peristernal long axis view. In case of the peristernal long axis view, we start at the clavicular, go down intercostal spaces until we arrive at the third or fourth intercostal space. The marker is located to the right shoulder of the patient and that's the first view we get. We see the peristernal long axis view and below we have a little bit of space where we can differentiate pearl effusion. Then we go a little bit more towards the anatomical structures. There was just the descending aorta, that's the pericardium. And in this area, we would see pericardial effusion or below pleurifusion. That's the left atrium, the left ventricle. Here, the aortic valve in the center of the image. Here, the right coronary cusp. And if you go a little bit more to the right in the image, that's the aorta ascendant. This is the mitral valve, the papillary muscles. Now we go a little bit into detail of the structures. What we here see initially is the right ventricle, the interventricular septum, the infralateral wall. We save this image and then we tilt the transducer or we move probably one intercostal space upwards to visualize the ascending aorta even more clear. Here it is seen on the uh, model and on the knobs you have to use, always adapt the depth and the gain settings and try to create an optimal image. As seen in this example, you can make the sector very narrow, which results in a very good frame rate, but it's not always optimal. So you should have the sector so that you see the entire anatomy you want to see. You can also activate or deactivate a feature called the virtual apex. That's the virtual apex, so you have less near field artifacts. You see now the inflow view of the right ventricle, you also can tilt the beam where you want to scan that same feature of the machine to optimize your imaging in the center of your imaging. You also can adapt the color Doppler and the region of interest there. The broader it is, the less frame rate you will have, but the more information you will get, but keep it as slim as possible. Tilting the transducer upwards will result in a view of the pulmonary artery and the pulmonic trunk and the RVOT and the pulmonic valve in the center of the image now. You can uh, visualize it quite nicely over here. What you also can do is activate the pulse wave Doppler with the help of the pulse wave Doppler. You see the outflow of the right ventricle and you can measure several measurements here. For example, one measurement would be the pulmonic acceleration time. So what is the time? It's the time from the beginning till the maximum velocity, which denotes a certain time interval. If it is longer than 120 milliseconds, it's definitely normal. As you see over here, that's the measurement. It's 143 milliseconds, so entirely normal. Then you can also measure the curve. You can try an automatic measurement, which works in this case very nicely. Going back to tilting the transducer downwards, you see the right ventricle and you can start uh, adding the color Doppler, you see the right ventricle in the top of the screen, the right atrium at the bottom of the screen, and you can activate the continuous wave Doppler where you can measure tricuspid regurgitation. As it doesn't have large tricuspid regurgitation, you cannot measure it here. Now we want to start with the M mode. The M mode can be used on several planes in the personal long axis. This is the view of the mitral valve. We also can take a look at the aortic valve and visualize the aortic box in the peristone long axis view as well. Saving all those images, continuing with color Doppler on the aortic valve and the mitral valve, you always should use the color Doppler on both valves individually and also on the tricuspid and the pulmonic valve. Also save the images and continuing with the peristone long axis view, you also can zoom in towards the aortic valve to visualize the valve in great detail. What you can see is that there is no anatomical variant, at least not in the personal long axis present. We can also do that with the mitral valve and focus our view on the mitral valve, the anterior mitral valve leaflet upwards and the posterior downwards in the screen. And you can also add color Doppler in this setting after saving the image and you can see where uh, regurgitation by tilting the transducer might be located. 